Great. So, um, welcome to the only talk of this time span. I'm glad I'm on the only one talking. I hope I will be somewhat interesting. <laughs> um, that's a great honor to be the only one talking. Um, so, I wanted to just do a status report of the Debian printing team because it's been now quite a long time I've been working in this part of Debian and I've tried to attract people into helping me for printing in the last years and it hasn't really worked. So. I'll just do another attempt and see what that gives and um, probably and hopefully give you some insight on how the whole thing works. So a little introduction about me. Um, I'm a Swiss guy. I'm working, I was basically grown up with computers. If you followed my talk from last year, I showed you some of the Swiss uh, computers back then in some Motorola 68,000 Swiss specific stuff that I was basically born with, and I'm currently working at, uh, at LeapCH. It's a Swiss company that does websites, and I'm working there is, as e-learning specialists, web apps, backender, and sysadmin, whatever that means. Um, towards Debian, I've been translating things at the Ubuntu site since 2005, uh, maintaining packages since 2009. I've been a developer since 2011, and maintaining some packages since then. That's not the most interesting part of that talk, so let's go forward. Um, this session's intent is to present the state of the Debian printing stack, its the evaluation, evolution until today, the leftover work, and also how I got trapped into maintaining that part of Debian. I mean, I don't have particular interests in printers, but yeah, and how you can help. So the, um, let's dive into the past. If you have questions, just raise your hand and interrupt me. Don't feel shy. So it, it started in June. 2010, I adopted Fumatic pr uh, filters because it was severely outdated then. There was no upload for a year, missing five new upstream releases. We were lagging, lagging severely behind Ubuntu, and the maintainer was quasi MIA. Typical case for adopting a package some months before the freeze. Uh, I was kind of looking for things to help the, the freeze out, and this was broken on my machine, and that's where the trap was working on me first. It just made it into squeeze because I did the upload like three hours after the freeze was surprise announced at the DebCon then. So I managed to get it through somehow, but that was the only package I was maintaining there uh, for squeeze. And then in July, I sent this uh, re uh, request for comments for forming a printing task force to various mailing lists, uh, the, CUPS, uh, the CUPS maintainers list, etc to see if it was possible to gather some people around maintaining the whole printing stack under team umbrella because before that it was just sets of packages maintained by individuals on their own side of Debian. The thing was kind of working but as soon as people went MIA or just had other interests then the, the packages were rotting. And then I started integrating the Ubuntu Delta into Debian because Ubuntu had apparently more the need than Debian to have a working printing infrastructure then, and they had been fixing this stuff on their, on their side. So it, it's interesting to take a look at the Ubuntu Delta in the first place, why, why there was one. one. One argument for that is that the updates were not proposed back to Debian at all. So no patches sent to the bug, uh, to the bug tracker, no other way than just looking at the packages in Ubuntu and see, well, there, was, there were updates there, so I should maybe take the, the patches back. But there was no upward co communication. And on the other hand, the packages were not getting any or much attention in Debian either. So no one was actually taking a look at this diff and making sure that uh, things were working. I mean, it was working for some parts, but many bugs still. But it's still free software, so patches were sitting there. You had a nice link from the PTS to actually get one big patch you could apply to, you, to the Debian package, and you could just integrate that. So the patches were available. It was not, th not that bad. So the, the work started at the beginning of the Wheezy cycle, around 2010, 2011, by making, basically adopting new packages and polishing the Ubuntu changes, like taking one change at a time, making one clean commit out of that, and uh, uploading releases one after the other, integrating new upstream releases, and all good, no? Well, not exactly, because uh, the dependency stack at that time was a little complicated, so to say. 
Um, because every package was linking against its dependencies and some of the drivers had been promoted to the print server task. So the print server task was pulling like hplib and gutenprint, but not other drivers for some reason. And it was pulling cups and cups was pulling popular and then, yeah, that, basically. You can go on the wiki if you want to revise history, but basically that's why, that's what was there when I started cleaning up the stuff. So, I started discussing the thing on the list, and it was like, we were like two or three, and maybe many people agreeing to the thing, but I was, I was not many for doing the thing. <laughs> so I started cleaning up the dust, uh, renaming the drivers. Now all printer driver are namespaced somehow. They all start with the same binary name. Reworking the dependencies tree, making sure you have a printer driver all that just recommends all driver av available drivers that the print, print task can depend on. So you get, you get, by default, you get all available free software drivers, just in case you might want to install a printer. There was this uh, PYPPD, that is a um, compressor that would take the PPD files and turn them into an XZ compressed Python script that will uncompress itself into PPDs. That basically allows um, uh, disk space reduction of 80%. That was written by during a Google Summer of Code, and I just wrote the uh, DH wrapper around that to automate that for the printing packages, so that w if you put the PPD files in the right place and run that tool, it will just do the compression and replacement and removing in the correct place. Uh, we have moved all the packages to Git, because some of them were in no VCS, some of them were in SVN, I don't think we had any in CVS, but anyway, moving to Git was a good thing. In Collab Mains by then, because I didn't have the interest in making a proper team namespace, and I wanted it probably easier to just put everything there. And the worst that might happen is that someone would be interested in putting patches. That didn't happen. But. And we hijacked the Debian printing list, uh, because no one was using that, and it was totally logical to use that as a maintainer list. To put to have everything in the same place, and uh, cleaning up, cleaning up the dependencies. Apparently, that's twice in the slide. Um, so, during that time, we managed to package all known free software drivers. There were some laying around that were not packaged, some that were a little complicated to package. But anyway, we. I tried to search through open printing and whatever, and find some others that were not package that were maybe supporting one or two printers, but I wondered it's probably good to have them in Debian anyway. Could be useful for one, one or two users, who know. Um, consolidated the Fumatic pack packaging and caught, caught back on upstream versions. And I think in Wheezy we had most of that. But there's still cups. Cups is like the thing you don't really want to touch when you do printing, because that's actually the complicated part. The rest is just drivers, filters, Small programs, it's easy when you start packaging because it's small things in different languages, it's funny. But CUPS is a little frightening. So I wondered, yeah, I mean, CUPS is it's, it's one big thing and it has an Apple upstream. I mean, yeah, it's not really the thing you want to touch. And CUPS is, is not really known for being super, whatever, free software friendly. So, yeah. But the, um, the, the Wizzy Freeze was upcoming. And Cups hadn't seen uploads for a year. So I started f fixing one thing after the other. And I started uploading NMUs. And I ended up doing 16 NMUs in a row. And not every NMU got a freeze uh, exception request, but almost all of them. So for each of the NMUs was then discussing with the release team all the changes to make sure they would enter, uh, enter Wizzy. Yeah, that. And in 2013, CUPS was especially made complicated by the fact that where there was no public VCS. There used to be an SVN, but it was down for some reason. There also used to be a public bug tracker, but it was down for some reason. And the few contacts I had with Apple was just over private mails because they had no mailing lists, or it was closed, or it was down, or yeah. So it's not exactly the upstream you're very fine working with. I mean, it's just a black hole. You just get a new tarball, no changes. I mean, you get a change log, but I mean, you don't get the individual changes. So 
And of course, the package back then had no test suite working, had no auto package test, so yeah, that. But finally, after doing 16 enemies, I think I thought to myself, yeah, what, what does that mean? Any, the real maintainer would not get back to uploading that for the stable release, so I might as well just adopt it and we'll see what happens. So apparently the trap worked. I ended up with one more big package that's cups. So where do we stand now? Um, if you run SID, you probably have most packages that are in their most recent upstream version. Uh, in the last year, we moved from collab mains to printing because it's now easier because I'm a DD, so it, I could easily create a new Aleph group. And we thought it's also easier just to see who was actual, actually in the team. Uh, so we sent uh, sent out a mail to the various persons that had somehow contributed and asked them to request the membership on Alias, so that the ones that are just MIA just don't request and they're not members, so that the list on Alias is somewhat relevant. We kind of managed to maintain the bug flow as a, at a reasonable level. I started, there was like 400 bugs, and now we're around 300, but that means also that the new bugs are addressed in within a reasonable delay, somehow. So now that I told already twice, the floss drivers are in Debian. There was a new one, I think, three months ago. Some, some guy did some driver for two or three brother printers that just works apparently. So we package that and it's, it's in Debian. Also, the Ubuntu diff is kept minimal. Uh, we've integrated some of the Ubuntu specific changes in the Debian packaging just to avoid having them create a new diff just or maintaining a diff over time. You can do that easily with a dpkg vendor, for example. Uh, so you have every, the package, the package is the same and just that build time it will do different things. So you can, for example, the default PDF page is different and the two default pages are in the Debian package. But when you build it on Ubuntu, you get the Ubuntu default page. Um, it has the advantage that the Ubuntu employee don't have to, the canonical employee don't have to maintain that patch over time. It, we managed to get the, the diff to zero sometimes. It's, sometimes you just see a peak in Ubuntu because they want to be faster than, than the music and they do the, their stuff. So that's the bugs. It's for old printing packages, it's not that bad. Apparently, I had to do actual work for my work in July and August, so it rose a little, but yeah. So cups, um, as you might have noticed, if you're Googling it now, uh, we've gone from 153 that was in squeeze to 175 now in Jesse. So it's two minor upstream releases uh, with quite a lot of changes and I think we packaged all intermediate versions and it's not bold to say that Wilsey will, will release with a minor version of 1.7. You mean Jesse? I mean Jesse, yes. Thank you. I'm getting old. Shit. Um, we've enabled the full test suite, so lots of patches within the test suite but not for disabling things, mostly for ignoring uh, things in the error logs because COPS test, test suite will count the number of errors in, in its error log. So you have to take things out so that the count always matches. Um, auto package test, it's basically printing to dev null, but we, ha we test that this continues to work when other parts of the, of the archive change. So printing to dev null works, that's good news. And we've patched in the system D socket activation and activity timeout. So the socket activation was originally from Re uh, Lennart and then changed by Gentoo to have that not mandatory because Gentoo also has CSV in it, where Red Hat just has systemd, so they don't have an option at runtime to, uh, to either activate or de deactivate the socket activation. So it's a mix of the Red Hat patch plus the Gentoo patch plus cleaning, of course. The activity timeout was from Ubuntu. So basically now uh, in SID, if you run systemd, um, or upstart, um, after 30 seconds of not doing anything, the cup server will shut, shut down itself and doesn't do anything. And when you print something or access the web interface over the 631 port, it just launches itself in a quarter of a second and print is, prints and then after 30 seconds shuts down again. As for upstream, we have 
regular, good and constructive contact with upstream. I mean, they have, again, uh, public VCS, sorry, a public VCS uh, bugs repository, so we can actually communicate on the public place and have the various changes also as individual units, uh, so it's quite easier than now. As for the constructive contacts, I also had good uh, private emails with Mike, uh, Michael Sweet from Apple about this new TLS versus OpenSSL discussion we had in Debian Devil some months ago because GNU TLS introduced some incompatibilities, so I thought, yeah, I could just build against OpenSSL, no problem. Cups has the GPL2 exception. And it was rightly pointed out that uh, every package that uses libcups2 also needs the GPL2 exception for, for OpenSSL. So it wasn't really possible. So we had that discussion, and actually Upstream was interested in finding, finding a solution, eventually patching in another SSL library, if that would help the Linux distributors. So it was kind of surprising for me that Apple would be interested in doing that, but they were, I must say. So that's good. And now we dropped the open SSL and it just builds against the latest GNU TLS version. Um, but yeah, the, <laughs> the Linux Foundation still needs to maintain several things that got dropped from CUPS. Uh, that's one drawback of having CUPS owned by Apple is that they basically dropped everything that were, was not interesting for them. So they just want to make sure you can print on Apple certified printers and the rest is left up to the community. So the Linux Foundation took over the CUPS filters and the CUPS broadcasting management. You can have the announcement between CUPS servers to get the queues in your local queue, etc., etc. So that's taken over by the Linux Foundation. I'm thankful they do that job. I'm happy I don't have to do it myself because I, it probably wouldn't work. And uh, Tilt Competitor is working for them, um, making that happen. So I'm glad he does it. Thank you. Um, we also have some people helping. I would like to thank Brian Potkin in particular for being precise, tireless, and helpful. I don't know if he's at DevConf, but he's been participating on the lists quite a lot for um, tackling down some bugs, reporting some useful bugs, uh, preparing patches also. That's been useful. And uh, you might have seen from the list of packages, we also have other packages that I don't maintain myself but that, that are also in the Debian printing team. So we have uh, Jonas for GhostScript and IGS, uh, C2050 by Marco, Cups BGNP by Joe, Min12XXW by Stefan, and T4Cups by Mike. Uh, that it's not packages that, doesn't, that move very often, but when they do, they, we have updates, so it's good. Thank you. Uh, in other parts of the stack, we still have uh, HPLib that is maintained independently by Mark Purcell and also gets updates regularly, so it's fine. And CUPS PDF by Martin Eric, um, that apparently is working too, so thanks. Now for the future, uh, scoping the problem, non-free plug and some incoming challenges. The problem of printing is that it's, it's still a must be of our world. When you discuss with people, some people say, yeah, CUPS is, is really shit and we should find, we could just drop that from the default installation. Yeah, well, you know, people still print, I mean, the non-paper world is probably in the advertisement, but it's not there at all. Um, printing, when it works, it's boring. It just has to work. And, but when it doesn't, it's really annoying. So it's, it's that type of technical challenges that you will only get complaints when it doesn't. And when it does, everyone is happy, but no bugs, no nothing. It just works, and it's fine. But on the other hand, printing is damn complex. Printer manufacturers come up with new protocols every three months, basically. Like, uh, they can even change printing protocols within the same product suit, for some reason. You get different IPP versions, uh, PCL supports, different uh, memory requirements. Now you can directly feed PDFs to printers, but the printers will sometimes fail because the internal PDF rendering will fail for some reason. So you have to circumvent that in the printer drivers. You also have different sending protocols, air prints, the Google Cloud print is coming. We have now IPP over USB for some printers, so it's like an ever-changing landscape for printing. I mean, it's a thing we've been doing for years and it's still changing for some reason. 
Um, it's complex also because it takes any format as input. Basically, you can print images, Word documents, PDFs, uh, PostScript, and you have to make sure it transform to whatever the printer is ready to, to get. Sometimes it's PostScript, sometimes it's PDF, sometimes it's some um, raw whatever, sometimes it's a bitstream. So we have complex chains. And one of the biggest problems is that when a user has a problem, the probability is one that you don't have the printer. I mean, I have one printer at home. I test it when I do new uploads. And I just printed the test page, and that works. But when a, when a guy has a problem on a printer, I don't have it. So it's quite hard to reproduce. Um, and there is still IP in the drivers. Um, I mean, we have full manufacturer suits that have no acceptable FLOSS support. And I will do some finger pointing now. I hope this is not videotaped. Oh, shit. Um, we've had this project from Debian France for the, they were basically offering books for people that would be happy to contribute to something. And I mentored two guys to take a look at what Brother is, do is doing uh, with the drivers. So I invite you to go there. The, the documentation is quite extensive. And uh, they tried to see how we could package that even in non-free just to consolidate the thing and have a somewhat clean um, dump of files, even in non-free, that you, we could install that instead of downloading a uh, 2002 deb that has no deb sums. Uh, but the web pages layout changed in the middle of the project. They just revamped the website, so we had a crawler that would get the virus drivers, and it just changed completely in the middle of the project. You have, you use, for some printers, you have two different versions, either for SI or Imperial units, because, I don't know, printers have phys different physical size, or I don't know. You have seashell all over the place. I don't think we have any valid in seashell interpreter yet in, the, in Debian. For many drivers, it's, there is no co-installation possible because they use the same name files with different contents in the same place. So you need the different file, but it with the same name in the same place for two different printers. So basically, you can either print to one or the other, but not the two at the same time. It still uses printcap that's been deprecated at least since Edge. I didn't check, but something very old. And yeah, there's a lot of bugs all over the place. It's loads and loads of shell code that would unpack parts of PPD files to generate things to put in other places, download things from the internet. Yeah, a whole lot of crap, frankly. But yeah, I mean, we should not only figure point at Brother. I mean, Samsung, Epson, they're doing exactly the same, or worse, or yeah. I just didn't take a look precisely at that, but the Brother project was quite frightening, and I don't think we will ever do something useful there. I don't know if that's, I don't know, yes? I seem to remember a Samsung printer driver installer from some years back would, uh, we required applications printing to, to run out of root, so it would put a set UID flag on certain applications that it thought uh, might be used for printing. I'm not surprised. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's the, dark sh the dark corner we don't want to, to see. I mean, we have the free drivers that work quite well, and there is a whole lot of things in the dark corner that you don't want to buy these printers because there's no way to make them work reasonably unless you download some very, very, very old Debian package, fix the depth sums inside, and stuff like that. For Jesse, um, new things, ghost scripts move to AGPL. That makes some people very happy. So what we'll do is we'll probably upload the, non, the latest non-AGPL version and have that in Jesse, and we'll probably see what happens then, because yeah, the freeze is soon, and it's quite a complex problem, and we won't have time to fix that before. So. We'll probably move some versions up, but not to the latest upstream, upstream version. Um, apparently, we're the only ones to care. All other distributions have just uploaded the AGPL version, and it's there. So, yeah. Um, CUPS 2.0 is around the corner. Uh, we hope it will get there by the end of, end of the year. It introduces upstream side of system that supports TLS certificate validation. Maybe it's time for for us to do that. 
Uh, they removed the OpenSSL support, and we have many OSX and en 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 enhancements. Whatever that is useful for us. Anyway, that's so expect 2.0 beta 1 in experimental in the next months. We'll see. So what you can do. Frankly, I'm getting bored by all that. Uh, it's been years now that I've, I've been maintaining the printing stack. Uh, not exactly alone, but for some parts quite alone. Uh, it's true to say that I've got s quite a lot of collaboration with Ubuntu to make that work. And there are many things that, is, that I just have to patch back into Debian, and it just works. But it's, it's sometimes a little boring to do that all alone. And um, yeah, I'm glad others are helping in the team. But for the most part, um, particularly CUPS, uh, it's not that easy. But it's not too complicated, believe me. Trust me. And one point is I'm very bad at motivating people or documenting processes. For example, the Teams page, I probably edited it twice, once in 2010 and once last year for the printing buff. And it's still sitting there with no many, not many updates. So someone motivated by processes, documentation, should jump, jump on the ship and do some stuff there. But this talk was an attempt at, at motivating people, at least. So we'll see if that works. And on the long term, uh, what we need is more drivers, wi writers, basically, because there are tons of printers that come out that, that don't get full support um, and that people use, basically. And the problem is not making sure everyone can buy the printer they want. People will have printers they have there, and they want that to work, and it doesn't. So we need people to actually write driver printers. Uh, we need more bug treasures that then become want to be maintainers, uh, hopefully, and uh, less bugs, pretty please. Uh, we can achieve less bugs two ways, by fixing more bugs or by introducing less bugs. So maybe we should do the two. So that's all for my little Debian printing stack uh, status. If you have questions, I'm happy to try to answer them. And otherwise, I think we can all move to dinner. Yeah. Where's the mic? The mic. So, uh, can you hear me? This is working. Anyway, do, do, do. <coughs> um, so I'm a bit interested in printing because we have lots of corporate printing, which doesn't work because it's all run for Windows people, uh, and so the poor Linux people are thoroughly ignored. Um, and in fact, if we print to the printers, they tend to crash, which is a bit sad. Um, and you know, people complain that the printers are very unreliable, and you go, actually it's us. <laughs> so it's like 50% chance of things exploding. But what I what I haven't been able to find is where do people who have to worry about corporate installations hang out? I couldn't find anywhere to ask questions. Because our IT people go, we don't know how it's supposed to work in Linux world. We have no fucking idea. Um, please tell us what to do and we'll do that. And I don't know anything about printing. Uh, or who to ask. Or where to go. Is there a place? I think... There must be lots of people who have big installations. Probably, who, yeah. And there must be some people who understand how this works. So um, the Debian printing list is not that much used. It gets the automated mails from the maintainers' mails, so we could drop that if people start to use that. But that would be one option. I think you should look into open printing lists. And if no list exists there, they should probably create one. I think they have one. Right. They have summits, and they have meetings for whatever okay. printing related. So somewhere on the open printing site would yeah. be a good place to yeah, I think ask for advice. advice. Yeah, OK. Um, I was just wondering if you would comment on uh, what's your what's your perspective on backports and things like that. So once we go stable, um, how do you see supporting the printing stack for two years, five years, however long stable is going to be out there? Mm, well, there are two answers for that. One is um, there's quite a lot of security work to do for stable already, and we had um, I think privilege. Uh, yeah, you could access, basically you could, yeah, privilege escalation in stable. So we had to re-ramp the whole configuration system in stable for CUPS during the Wheezy cycle. So uh, that kind of takes the time that would be allocated to backports. Uh, the other answer is um, patches welcome. 
so I didn't do backports for Wheezy yet, just because they, I had enough of my plates for SID. Uh, but I would happily help anyone wanting to prepare backports. I think it shouldn't be too hard. Cups is probably buildable right away. So yeah. Okay, that so that's cups. How about the how about drivers? So same. I mean, if, if anyone interested, I could just help making sure it happens. But uh, it's unlikely I would do it myself. Let's do it so. Thank you. So, if you uh, do not do new drivers, typically depend on a new version of cups. Usually not, because they build against libcups2, but libcups2 is kind of ABI stable since years, so it shouldn't be too much too hard. So that so then um, you so the missing hardware support is a is as I understand it always considered an important bug and worthy of a stable update. So that means that if you wanted to, you could you could update drivers, add, add new drivers yeah. in stable for hardware enablement. That's interesting. Yeah. The other, th uh, I also had a question about uh, drivers, which is uh, typically when I uh, plug into a new printer, um, I get a list of possible drivers, um, possibly limited to the exact model or, or not, but th there are always seem to be more than one option per model. Is that, I assume that's because there are multiple collections of drivers that are packaged. How, as a user, am I supposed to decide which which of those to use? Um, trial and and attempt. <laughs> I I mean, the for some drive for some printers, you get a recommended version from Fumatic that has this parenthesis recommended thing, so you should just pick that one. Um, I think we mo mostly also have multiple drivers per printer because. Sometimes for a single printer, depending on where in the world it was, it would work better or worse with different printer drivers. So, but the the one database that we use use for that is Fumatic DB that is maintained on the open open printing website. And I th the where exactly you should report bugs is, isn't exactly clear. Also for me, so I should clarify that. Well, I've, we never, I've, that never I've never selected a driver and found that it didn't work. Um, so, as far as I'm concerned, you're doing fine there. It simply is this having been presented with a choice where I have, I don't know what would the, the difference would be. Was that on the CUPS web interface? Yes. Yeah, I think that there the selection isn't very smart, but I think when you use Python CUPS or one of the um, GNOME or KDE frontends, you get a little less options, I think. But that's more front-end work than whatever CUPS related. But, yeah, I don't have a better answer. Now, <laughs> any other questions? Kind of following on from what Ben said, yeah, I, I've been under the impression that those were different ways of talking to the printer, um, you know, because there's always, as you say, there's always 17 ways of, of talking to any given printer. So I kind of thought that they were all different flavors. Um, but again, it's extremely unclear. You go, I don't know whether I want Fumatic thingy or, or HP lip thingy or something else thingy. And as you say, you try one and usually it works. Yeah. So, uh, and you go, I could sit here and try all 17, but I don't know whether that's... And then sometimes there's the interface to the printer you can specify. So our fancy print in the office has 81 different ways of talking to it. And you go, I don't want to try all those, uh, you know. Which the four I've tried all make it crash, but, you know, <laughs> sometimes. Just um, in one that works. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but uh, there seem to be a very small number of people who actually understand this stuff. Yes, that's... There's Till. Yeah, exactly. And, and like maybe three other people somewhere. Yeah. Right. So, um, but he's, yeah, we should talk more to Till, I suspect. <laughs> and yeah, he's m making most of that work on the Ubuntu side, I think, as a canonical employee. And, um, and what's the... St I vaguely gathered that the Cups browsing thing, as you say, has disappeared upstream. So we're keeping it in a Debian and Ubuntu while we can. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Uh, Basically, using um, zero conf avahi thing. Well, so that's how that's how Apple wants it to work, but that doesn't work. In a, especially in a big office, that doesn't work at all because you're on different network segments. 
one thing that was dropped and that hasn't been reintroduced on open printing was the LDAP support. That was or that used to be in cups and that's now removed. That was used in big corporations that had like an LDAP list of printers right. instead of like listening to the noise of old printers announcing themselves on the network. And we regularly get users saying, how could I pick? Oh, uh, the latest one was something like, the browsing daemon has 10% CPU. Is that because I have 100 printers of my office? Well, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I can't really, I don't have, have the capacity of recoding that anyway. So if a um, big corporation wants to get LDAP support, they should make LDAP Fix support. Fix it, yeah. But I'm, I'm open to integrating that as a Debian patch if that helps, but I can't really fix that myself. So yeah, if I had any time, I'd like to help you with printing, but I have too many hats already, so I'm not promising anything. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Mostly so I can actually print stuff without having to run a Windows VM, which in practice is how I printed my stuff to get here. Yeah, that's bad. That's pretty sad. Well, actually, one, one thing that... that geeks like us should know is how to pick the correct printer when you, when you buy one. And I think that... Yeah, so my home printers all work fine. It's beautiful. The cup's browsing works, stuff prints, it's all lovely. It's when you go to work that yeah. the whole thing's a disaster. Yeah. And it's Which manufacturer should we prefer? Um. <laughs> <laughs> so which manufacturer should we prefer? Um, I'm not paid by any of these, but I think HP printers mostly work fine. Uh, either through HPLP, HPLYP, or other things. Um, yeah, that's baseline, I would say. But yeah, others work too. <laughs> well, if anyone has contacts at Brother, tell me to contact me and we'll manage something and recommend some good practices for modern printing, if you know, because that's not an acceptable way of providing Linux support, I think. Anyway, other questions? Everyone's hungry. Good. Thank you very much. <laughs>